Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we have Stephen Lagore Hughes. He went missing January 12th, 1986, Bountiful, Utah. 46 years old, 5'11", 180 to 185 pounds. Uh, let's see. Last seen on the evening, January 12th, 1986, at his residence. His truck was found the next morning at his business, but he was gone and didn't tell anyone he was leaving. This says he had strawberry blonde hair and green eyes, may have a mustache, baseball cap, um, vehicle was left at place of business. And here is a photo of him. And I'm going to show you the John Doe that I think looks like him. And we're going to go back and forth. And yeah, it looks like the face might be a little bent, bent out of shape or something. But I don't know. I think that looks enough like him. Looking at the hair. Looking at the ears. I don't know. The nose looks a little bit different. The chin. The shape of the face. Um, I don't know. I really just think that might be him because he went missing um, January 12th and this John Doe showed up February 2nd, died the same day. And we'll look at more information about him. Here's the Charlie Project. It, this says he was 5 foot 10 to 6 foot 1. Um, it, and you can pause it and read more of it. It said he had skin discoloration, discoloration in the middle of his back, scars from shingles on his left side. He had had extensive dental work, including fillings and bridges. Hughes was last seen at his place of business, Bountiful, Utah, January 13th. His truck was located abandoned there, same day. He's never been heard from again. Before he went missing, Hughes was in relationships with multiple women some of whom were married. It's unclear if this has anything to do with his disappearance. However, few details are available in his case. And I don't know if that's true or not. I just know that information is on there, that somebody must have put it there. So I just read what they have on there. Uh, Doe Network. Like I said, you can pause this and read it. Uh, heart problems. He has heart problems, may be in need of medical attention. Last seen in Bountiful, Utah, January 12th, 1986. Okay, so then they're wondering where did he go, right? And I don't know when they actually reported him missing. But then we have this John Doe that I thought looked similar, uh, Reno, Nevada. And, you know, you're probably not going to, you know, maybe you fly there and not take your truck. Height 5'9 to 5'11, 150 pounds. This is brown with gray at temples, gray eyes but your eyes look grayish when you die don't they so tan jacket blue shirt blue jeans white t-shirt white socks unknown white metal watch and three rings um victim was witnessed walking then collapsed at the intersection of east taylor street and virginia street so he had on three rings i don't know if this said anything about his jewelry Let's see, Swiss pocket knife on keychain, gold necklace, gold watch. So, I don't know, he might have had rings, he might not have. So, and I'll look at the photos again. There's that photo, and then there's that likeness of the reconstruction, whatever. So, then we go to NamUs, and it says February 2nd, 1986. That's like two weeks later, right? Reno, Nevada. So, let's see, February 11th. I mean, five foot eleven, about the same height. Um, dead for about an hour, maybe. Circumstances: witness collapsed while crossing intersection. No identification on the descendant. So I don't know where his ID maybe may have been, but that's strange that he didn't have any ID on him. Tan jacket, blue shirt, blue jeans, white t-shirt, white socks, white metal watch, three rings. I don't know, did people carry ID then? I had to carry ID. I only had to carry ID if I went to buy cigarettes or something, though, because they would card me when I had cigarettes, and it was so annoying. So, Okay, so then we have this John Doe, also Los Angeles, California, recognizable face, six foot, gray hair, blue eyes. 23 to 60 years old, scar on lower right abdomen, 
blue jacket, three shirts, one, so three shirts, one blue, one brown, one green, black socks and blue pants, brown shoes. The descendant was found unresponsive on a sidewalk in a pedestrian tunnel. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Paperwork found with the descendant indicated he used the name John Bradley. So that's the only John Doe's I could find that fit him. And to me, you know, I wouldn't find it unusual for someone to go from Utah to Reno, Nevada. Anyway. And I don't know if they would fly out there or if they would rent a car and drive, but I really just feel like he looks similar, even looking at his eyes and his eyebrows, even though the face looks a little bit whacked out of shape, but I don't know, you know. He had a lot of dental, he had all that dental work done. And I know my husband, since he's had all that dental work done on his, he recently had all his teeth pulled out and got dentures, it really made him look a lot older. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, don't forget to pray for his loved ones and his family of him and the both John Doe's. And please feel free to leave comments. If you have any information that you feel might be helpful, maybe you know what happened to him, maybe you know different things that you were afraid to come forward about before years ago, but it's been a lot of years, so maybe you could come forward and tell authorities any information that you might have. Maybe you don't have to be afraid of coming forward with that information. Maybe you gave information years ago. You're not sure if they still have it because, you know, people used to write notes and they would keep the notes and then they, you know, we went to uh, word processors. Then we went to the floppy drives, you know, and then we went to different storage, you know. So the investigators may have progress through different storages and different software programs that may have crashed uh, case files that would have gotten you know probably lost after this many years so if you have any information that even that you gave them years ago and you're not sure if they have it let them know if you've heard rumors from people drinking and talking you're not sure if they're true you can give the information to them and let them know that it's just hearsay that you've heard you're not sure if it's true but you thought you should come forward and give them that information anyway um like I said, please feel free to leave comments and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.